Today, we're going to study God's words titled, He who stands firm to the end will be saved. Many things happened in the Winter Olympic Games. Among them, let me introduce one story which corresponds to today's sermon title. In the 3,000 meter short track speed skating relay, a skater fell while passing the baton. Even a difference of a hundredth of a second can decide the winner. Falling in this kind of race makes your chances of winning close to zero. After falling, she was half a lap behind everyone else. If she was already half of a lap behind, I think she should have given up the race. However, her team finished the race, came in first place, and even set a world record. As they completed the race without giving up, they came in first by a large margin, ahead of second and third place. Brothers and sisters, while walking in the desert of faith, we sometimes fall due to various temptations, even though we face many situations that make us fall. Don't we have to get up again like a roly-poly and surely reach our destination, the kingdom of heaven? On the way there, we sometimes fall and face a temptation that makes us think, should I give up? However, let us be the heavenly family members who will enter the everlasting kingdom of heaven without giving up. So Jesus said, only he who stands firm in faith to the end, even to the moment the doors of the glorious heavenly kingdom are opened, can be saved. Let us see these words in Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, verse 16. I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. Be on your guard against men. They will hand you over to the local councils and flog you in their synagogues. On my account, you will be brought before governors and kings as witnesses to them and to the Gentiles. But when they arrest you, do not worry about what to say or how to say it. At that time, you will be given what to say. For it will not be you speaking, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. All men will hate you because of me, but he who stands firm until when? To the end will be saved. Here, to the end means until it is over. He who stands firm until when? To the end will be saved. Even if we encounter many difficult situations, we must keep our faith until the end. Even though the skater in the woman's 3,000 meter relay fell, she got up and continued. Although they were so far behind and could have given up, they kept skating and won first place, even breaking the world record. When I saw this, I thought, this is not merely a sports game, but it seems that God created this situation for us. While walking the long journey in the desert of faith, we may face many temptations and sometimes become weak in faith. Some may become worn out or fall. God sees the end from the beginning. So what words of encouragement does He give us? Stand firm to the end. He who stands firm will be saved. 
Let us go to Matthew chapter 24, verse 7. Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But he who stands firm to the end will be, what will they be? Saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. God allowed our gospel to be preached everywhere. This gospel has entered every continent, nation, region, and now even the remaining cities. Brothers and sisters, let us not become weary, but work hard until the end. Won't the everlasting kingdom of heaven be more valuable and meaningful? if we enter it after standing firm to the end? Please do not take the easy way out. The paths we are now walking might sometimes feel tiring, and life seems meaningless and hopeless. Some people might be living this kind of life. However, after overcoming all those things, the kingdom of heaven we are walking toward becomes more valuable. Since this earth is the city of refuge, we cannot live without hardship. If we try to seek the kind of environment, living conditions, and happiness we will have in heaven while living in this city of refuge, we will always fail. When it seems that we have the right circumstances to work, we don't have the right people. And when we have the right people, we don't have the right circumstances. When one thing seems right, something else isn't. And when the other thing seems right, another thing isn't. We are living in this kind of situation. Despite that, if we stand firm to the end, God will grant each of us a gold medal. Wouldn't it be more glorious to have a spiritual gold medal? The heavenly crown that we are going to receive is more valuable. Heaven will still be a wonderful place, even if we enter it after living a comfortable and easy life in this world. Think about Apostle Paul, who made every effort to go to heaven while he was on this earth. He endured being naked, cold, hungry, thirsty, and going without sleep for the gospel. Who will value heaven more? Paul or someone who gained it after living a comfortable life. Therefore, God places temporary trouble, difficulties, hardships, and persecution on our path. Does not the Bible say that God is always overseeing the situations and helping us to overcome all the tests? Let us go to Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12. See to it, brothers, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God, but encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. We have come to share in Christ if we hold firmly till, until when? Till the end, the confidence, the faith with full confidence we had at first, when we started our life of faith. God let us know that we will surely share in His glory. God said that our life of faith becomes meaningful when we stand firm to the end. If, while running in the lead, we give up halfway, we can never receive first place. 
Doesn't it mean that we don't deserve to receive a reward? That is why God said, you will share the glory in Christ. If you hold firmly to the end, the confidence you had at first, let us move on to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and engrave on our hearts the words, He who stands firm to the end will be saved. The reason why we need to read this chapter is because our life of faith is the same as the Israelites' life in the desert for 40 years. The relationship between their 40-year journey to Canaan in our journey to heaven is a shadow and reality. Many Israelites did not make it to the end, Canaan, because they felt discouraged and gave up halfway. Therefore, we should not follow their example on our way to heaven. Even though they gave up halfway, what should we do? We must say we will follow God wherever He guides us until the end. We will follow God, not losing our hope. Although our life is painful and tiring, and we feel like giving up a dozen times a day, we can never forsake our faith, the confidence we had at first. With this resolution, we must go forward. Let us look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. For I do not want you to be ignorant of the fact, brothers, that our forefathers were all under the cloud, and that they all passed through the sea. They were all baptized into Moses, in the cloud and in the sea. They all ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that accompanied them, and that rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them. Their bodies were, what happened to their bodies? Scattered over the desert. All the bodies that were scattered were those who gave up. They did not make it to the end, since they had many kinds of excuses. They regarded every unfavorable situation they faced as hardship. And that was why they came to grumble and complain. Even influencing the people around them. So verse 5 explains that their bodies were scattered over the desert in the end. Let us see verse 6. Now these things occurred as examples to keep us from setting our hearts on evil things, as they did. Do not be idolaters, as some of them were. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and got up to indulge in pagan reverie. We should not commit sexual morality, as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 of them died. We should not test the Lord, as some of them did, and were killed by snakes. And do not grumble, as some of them did, and were killed by the destroying angel. These things happened to them as examples and were written down as warnings for us, on whom the fulfillment of the ages has come. So if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. No temptation has seized you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not what? He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, He will also, what will He provide? He will provide a way out. Provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. God will open the way if we are determined to keep our faith until the end. What we face is not a high mountain that we cannot climb or a swamp we cannot cross. God puts us in difficult circumstances or environments temporarily. But whenever this happens, 
God opens the way for us to overcome and bypass them. If we have determination to go forward until the end without losing our faith, God would always guide us. Therefore, I ask all the children of Zion to follow the way God opens for you so that you can safely arrive to heaven. Here, the word temptation is mentioned. What is needed to overcome temptation? We need faith. To overcome temptations, there is nothing better than faith. God was displeased with the Israelites, so they were destroyed and their bodies were scattered in the desert. In this age, let us not live like the Israelites of 3,500 years ago, but live joyfully and happily in gracious faith in Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother. I ask you to have the hope that we are going to our spiritual home, heaven, very soon, and go forward with that faith. Then, with what kind of faith did the forefathers of faith overcome all temptations and receive a rich welcome into Canaan? Let us see Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. Everyone, think about it carefully. Scholars have slightly different opinions about the work of building the ark, but they say that it must have taken Noah between 40 and 120 years to build the ark. Think about how Noah only focused on building the ark for such a long time. It is not something a man can do. In that age, God said, rain will fall to this earth and flood it. It was an unbelievable situation. Let's imagine Noah enduring with faith for about a year or two. Let's imagine him enduring for 10 years. He endured for 20 years. And he endured for 30 years. He kept on working, but it seemed endless, and not even one drop of water was falling from the sky. However, God had told him to build the ark. Is this something that can be done without faith? When he finished it, didn't God finally judge the world with water? Didn't God save Noah and his family? And through them, didn't God make the lifeless world into a better one for all mankind? All the forefathers of faith mentioned in Hebrews chapter 11 endured until the end with faith. If they had given up after about 10 years or 20 years or 30 years, they would not have witnessed the amazing work of God's salvation. Let us continue with verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the Promised Land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, Abraham, even though he was past age and Sarah herself was barren, 
was enabled to become a father because he considered him faithful who had made the promise. And so from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, and they admitted that they were aliens and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. Isn't our eternal country the kingdom of heaven? If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. On the way to the eternal kingdom of heaven, the spiritual Israelites faced various temptations in the desert. Some people fall every time they face a temptation, while others overcome the same temptation. When another kind of temptation is given, some overcome and some fall. And when a different temptation comes, some overcome and some do not. When the Israelites left Egypt, there were about 600,000 men. But when they arrived in Canaan, the number was still the same. Even though 40 years had passed, although so many must have been born into the second generation in these 40 years, the number of Israelites stayed the same from the time they departed to the time they arrived. What was very pitiful was that the second generation entered the land of Canaan. But those who came out of Egypt died in the desert. Everyone, we are now walking in the desert of faith. Our goal is to go to the end. Going 70% or 80% is meaningless. There is no difference between reaching 70% or 80%. Reaching 90% and 99% is the same. We must reach heaven completely. We cannot say that someone who went 99% is better than someone who went 70%. They are all the same. Whether they went 70% or 99%, their destination is still the same. Our final destination is the everlasting kingdom of heaven. Although we face many hardships and difficulties on the way to heaven, we must never give up. Those who could not enter Canaan were the ones who gave up halfway. They gave up submitting to temptations. Instead of saying they gave up, how does the Bible describe what they did? It says, they fell into temptation. Brothers and sisters, do not give up. Everyone falls at least once. We cannot help but fall in our life. But if we fall, we should get up again. Whether we trip over a rock or miss our footing, we may fall. Then, we just need to get up again. By doing so, let us not fail to reach the kingdom of heaven we are striving for. Since God sees this age from the beginning, God is encouraging us through this message. God said, Do not forget what happened in the Israelites' 40-year life in the desert. You need to remember why they gave up and why they couldn't enter Canaan so that you will not fail to enter heaven. God told us to have greater faith than the Israelites in order to enter heaven. Let us look at Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2. Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the desert these 40 years. What should we do about this? We must remember it. Why do we have to remember this? We must learn their example to enter heaven. They gave up, but we will not give up. Although one of the skaters fell in the 3,000-meter relay, she got up again, which led her team to pass the other teams. 
even coming in first. Seeing this, I wonder, why did God create this situation? Why did God let us see this? Although the skater fell, in the 3,000 meter relay, she kept skating. Although she fell, she got up. This story was the most impressive for me. That is why God said in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2, that we need to remember why God made the Israelites walk in the desert. It was to humble you and to do what else? I tested you to see if you have faith worthy enough to enter heaven. Sometimes, God lets us walk a path that is boring, extremely busy, tiring, or easy. To test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep His commands. Verse 3, He humbled you, causing you to hunger, and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your fathers had known, to teach you that a man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothes did not wear out, and your feet did not swell during these forty years. Know then, in your heart, that as a man disciplines his son, so the Lord your God disciplines you. Observe the commands of the Lord your God, walking in His ways and revering Him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with streams and pools of water, with springs flowing in the valleys and hills, a land with wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil and honey, a land where bread will not be scarce and you will lack nothing, a land where the rocks are iron and you can dig copper out of the hills. When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land He has given you. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God, failing to observe His commands, His laws, and His decrees that I am giving you this day. This is what the Bible tells us. God told us not to forget what happened in the desert. If we walk the same path like the Israelites, we will give up, feel discouraged, and scatter just like the Israelites. That is why God tells us to remember their path so that we can go around that path while walking in the desert of faith. Let us never be discouraged. Let us not give up either. You can give up on everything else of the world, but never on the kingdom of heaven. Let us cheer up. Although our physical life is difficult, and many problems hold us back and make our life of faith difficult. God places them momentarily in front of us, but always opens a way for us. God wants to see how much we've grown, whether we are still little children who cannot even crawl over a small obstacle, or if we have become grown-ups who can step over anything with ease. Since God promises to open the way, let us not cling to difficulties too much or feel discouraged or disheartened. Our family members of Zion, let us always remember that we have hope for heaven and that we are walking the gospel path together with father and mother. Therefore, let us be joyful always. By doing so, let us all become the beautiful heavenly family who will be able to enjoy eternal life and happiness in our spiritual home, heaven, where Father and Mother dwell forever and ever. Our family members of Zion, cheer up and receive many blessings. Thank you very much.